Greetings. Um, this is Stan Scrabbit, and today I am going to be talking to you about Zotero, a citation management tool. Uh, the reason that I'm introducing this is basically I have a class. They're going to be doing a literature review, and uh, this is a great tool to manage all the research that they're doing and as grad students going to be doing through the rest of their academic career. I learned a lot of lessons uh, as I was putting together my dissertation and going through the process of the proposal and such that uh, that's how I came upon this tool in the first place and um, I think it's just a, a wonderful tool uh, it just kind of helps you keep control over um, all the information that you have so um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and show that particular tool so without further ado I am going to uh, first talk about uh, where you can find Zotero. So, and Zotero can be found on uh, at Zotero.org. Uh, this is where you can go pick it up. Uh, it's available for a Mac, Windows, or a Linux uh, computer. And uh, with this, you can either use the, the web-based tool. Um, you can download a standalone client. That's what I do. I have a, a program on all my computers, and I put, it on, I put it on my laptop, I put it on my home computer, and I put it at my work computer. Um, that way, if I'm writing research, regardless of where I'm at, I have um, all the latest and greatest uh, information that I've uh, included into that system. And so, um, basically, this is where you get it. In addition to downloading uh, the program, um, the other thing that you're going to want to do is uh, download uh, devices that are specific for your web browser. So, um, first of all, here's the download. Uh, you can get Zotero for Firefox. Um, that's what I initially used, and it works uh, very well. Um, there's also a plug-in for Word, and when you plug it into Word, it'll help you uh, kind of write the paper as you're going along, and I'll show a little bit about that later. But then you also have Zotero for Windows, um, and, and I believe the similar things for Mac. Um, uh, the program just recognizes that I am using a Windows computer, and so it pulls that information in. So in addition to downloading this, what you also want to do is get the appropriate browser extension, so Chrome, Firefox, um, or Safari. I personally use Google Chrome as my browser, and so during the, this presentation, I will be using um, Google Chrome um, you know, as I demonstrate different things. So, so you're going to want the uh, to download the program or get it for Firefox. Um, once again, I use Chrome, so I'm I'm getting that. And so, other available clients that are available, and then ways that you can extend this. Now, in addition, Zotero can be used um, right from your web browser. So if if you happen to be at a, a strange computer and you're not able to load Zotero, you know, you can go ahead and look at Zotero and go through many of the functions uh, directly from the web browser. So if you find some new research, um, you can do that. Okay. I often do not uh, use uh, Zotero on the web. Uh, I basically go through my client. Um, one of the things that is really great about Zotero, so um, if you're you know, going through this presentation, uh, you want to learn more or dig in a little deeper, they have a wonderful library of um, just getting to know Zotero and really how to um, manipulate, manipulate it. So you know you can add for you know, different preferences. Um, there's extensions for it. Um, they, they do a great job, but a lot of great videos that talk about Zotero. Um, and so that's certainly 
you know, off their main page where you can find that. All right, at this time, I am going to go ahead and change over to Zotero itself. And then, you know, we'll, I'll show, probably flip back and forth. And um, so now, moving on to um, the program itself called Zotero. And so <clears throat> when it opens up, there's a lot of information. Well, basically, it starts empty, which is kind of frightening that, you know, you, you're adding all this. You have to add a lot of, of information. Okay. But, you know, just kind of give you a guided tour around Zotero and how to um, kind of make it work for you. First of all, everything that you put into Zotero goes into my library. So every, every book, every journal article, it'll go into my library. From there, what you can do is create collections. So in here, I have a couple collections. I have, uh, you know, a couple papers that I did for a class, uh, articles I collected for dissertation, a paper I did for gamification, and, um, and then also for a class that I just got done teaching. Well, right now I'm working on another paper, so I'm going to add a new collection, and it deals with uh, it deals with FERPA. Okay, so so I'm going to call it my FERPA paper, and as you can see, it it inserted um, it put it right in there, um, but there's no articles that are attached to it. Okay, so <clears throat> once again, all your articles will always stay in the library. But a subset can be found in one of these other other items, and so with this, these these different articles that are listed here, um, if I make changes to them, you know, if I add a, if I add a different note or um, add new tags, then it will automatically be updated in the library. Okay, so that's important to know. This top piece, anytime you make changes to it, to one of your articles or books, add different notes, it'll automatically update um, what's referenced in your library. On the other hand, you can work on group projects. So uh, a game paper that we were working on, uh, we have a variety of different articles that are listed there. If I make changes here, that's only available to the rest of the group that shares that particular um, library uh, folder. Okay, so so we have this library for game paper. We have this library for UW extension. Um, I can add collections to that, so I can put a, a new collection under that. I'll leave it untitled. As you can see, it's right there, and I'll delete that collection. Any changes are that will stay only in that library. So if I happen to take a resource, for example, the Answer Garden, and I drag it on over to this University of Wyoming Extension Library and drop it in, it'll be listed there. However, if I make a change to it, so there's no notes in this, right? So I have no notes. I'll add a new note and say, you know, test note. Okay, so I have a note in here for um, this library here, but when I go back to my original library, there are no notes attached. Okay, so that's important to know. Um, but it's a great way to collaborate on a paper if you're working with uh, a number of people. Below that item is tags. Tags are um, the words that you use to describe elements of the article or book that you're reading or a chapter. And with that, that allows you to narrow down um, you know, the articles or, or find the articles that are relevant to, the, uh, to that particular uh, topic. So adult learning, for example, if I click on adult learning, it narrows it down to these five particular articles, which is um, 
quite useful. I can uh, look at adult learning and barriers and it, it narrows it down to that one specific article. So when you're writing a paper and you're focusing on a theme, if you went through the effort to tag your articles, you can find that information very quickly. Um, you know, for example, find all the articles on age that I, I listed or um, alternate reality. Let me see if I can find something a little better. So barriers. These are all the articles or books that um, I tag with barriers and I can also narrow it down to benefits so so between those two articles so that's you know kind of the importance of going out and tagging a resource the next uh, piece that I want to show you is actually the elements that you have in here so these different resources that I've collected so here's a book by Acoff and uh, Greenberg and when you know I look at the down arrow it'll show me that I have citable notes and also just notes that I collected raw notes that I collected um, as I was reading the book um, the citable notes I went through and basically you know got them all prepared so I can go ahead and just copy and paste into an article and so that just makes it a little easier um, as, as just preparing things. Okay. Now, naturally, when you piece these things all together in your article, you you know you'll have to to go out and make adjustments. But um, so in this item, we're going to start with the the first tab over in the right hand side. This happens to be the info. So it tells me what type it is, the title. Uh, authors and I can keep adding multiple author authors it gives me the abstract for the book so I have that available to me and you know where the publisher is the title ISBN number and all that uh, that important information when you put in information into this uh, for example the title it's it's important to get it ready to use in the format that you're going to write your paper. So typically writing an APA 6, I would go ahead and make sure that that's set up. Um, you know, that that sometimes when you bring things in automatically, the capitalization is not how you necessarily want it. So um, take time to make sure that you have that all set up uh, the way that you want. The next thing is being able to add notes, right? So you can add as many different notes as you want. And in some cases of books, here's another book. Uh, let me find a good one. All right, so this one has um, social media for trainers that I have captured notes in seven of the chapters, add some definitions, and I, I, I pulled all those notes together. And that's, um, you know, that just saves me effort later because I can search through all these. I, you know, not only can I use the tags to narrow things down, but I can go ahead and do a search and it'll find, it'll look through all the info, it'll look through the notes, and it'll look through the tags uh, to help you narrow down what you're looking for. And these, uh, these notes are, you know, just simple notes. You know, things that, uh, you know, kind of grabbed my fancy at the moment while I was putting that information in. Um, with these notes, um, one of the things that I am starting to do now that I haven't done in the past is I would typically uh, do my tags. I have 44 tags, and this is, I would put them against the, the, the resource. Um, now I'm getting a little smarter and I'm putting tags specifically for that chapter, for example, um, or that section or that note, and I'm tagging that. And that, um, as I'm coming to find out, and I have to go back and do a lot of cleanup, is helping me uh, narrow it down uh, more rapidly. So. Um, 
you know, I would recommend tagging at the lowest level possible uh, instead of tagging at like the book, for example. And one of the things that you can do is you can relate this note to another note. Um, it's something that I have not personally done, but it's a capability that you have uh, being able to do that. Okay. So now, um, how do you get notes in here? Many different ways. Uh, first way is you can select this plus sign, and you can decide, you know, for example, it's a book, and you can go ahead and type in all this information. Okay, that is a little bit laborious, and it's not the method that I that I choose. Um, so instead, I use this. Well, um, while we're here, you have more options of different types of resources that you can collect, from artwork to blog posts to uh, forum posts or instant messages, uh, maps all the way to video recording. So they give you a lot of different ways that you can collect information. So you can see what is available for a book, but if we wanted to do an audio recording, that information changes. Or if I wanted to do um, a journal article, then that information changes. So you know, each one has different information that you would typically collect and a, a great place to go ahead and put that information. So um, getting, getting information into this, um, let me show you how I would typically do it. So one way is by identifier. So I have a new book that I'm going to be using for the, cla for the class that I'm in and I know that it's not listed. Okay, and it's a, it's a book called An Easy Guide to APA Style. And I'll probably reference it somewhere in my class. So what I do is I type in the ISBN number. And it will go through and look online and find that particular item and pull in the information. In probably 95% of the cases that I've done this, um, that has worked. So we're looking for an easy guide to APA style. So I hit return, and there it is, an easy guide to the APA style, okay, by Schwartz, Landrum, and Gurung. Second edition, Los Angeles, Sage Publications, 2014. Um, it's 234 pages, so it has all the information that I need, and we're ready to go. Uh, I can start adding notes. I can start adding tags. It's already got a couple tags for me, um, and it pulls that information in automatically. So, you know, one of the things I could probably do is go to Amazon and grab an abstract, so I, I know a little bit more about the book. Okay, so that's that's one way. Um, you know, <laughs> these couple other items uh, right next to that uh, magic wand. Uh, is being able to add notes to that. So with this selected, yeah, I can go ahead and add a new child note, and typically you're adding child notes, so it'll add it to that reference. And I can go ahead and type whatever I want, and it'll add that particular note. So um, I'm going to move that item to trash because I don't need it right now. The other thing that you can do is you can add attachments. Right. So one of the things is you can upload and attach documents or link to a file. So a good place to put attachments and link to them is Dropbox. So you put, a, you know, have a place that you're collecting it. I recommend Dropbox. Uh, put your, put those articles there, and then just, you know, uh, right click on that item in Dropbox and attach that link to the file. That way you're not paying for storage space on Zotero, which is a capability, and I don't pay for anything. Um, the other option, is, you know, and then it's available to you wherever you happen to go. So um, having those items um, done that way is quite useful. So 
All right, let's see. Um, show you other ways of adding articles. So well, I'm going to be doing some research on FERPA, so let's, let's just go start there. And I'll show you how to add it from your web browser um, as you're doing some, some research. So we're going to switch back over to the web browser and make sure that I get the right place. There we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to the library and I'm going to do some research. So this is the new uh, University of Wyoming library and I am going to do um, an article search and I'm just going to type in FERPA see what gets me there okay so now what I want to do is I'm looking for specific journal articles dealing with FERPA and so I have all kinds of um, resources that are available to me. Some things uh, I'm dealing with books and I'm not really uh, keen to that. So, so I want scholarly review and journal articles. And so we'll start with that, and then I can go ahead and, and filter that uh, even more. I'm not seeing what I wanted to see. So let me go back. Oh, I have to log in to the university, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, if you're off campus, um, let's do that again. So starting at the University of Libraries, scroll down and you have an opportunity to log in to your accounts. So I'm going to log in, do an off-campus login. Wow. Problem with the resource I'm looking for. Well, that's not nice. We'll log in this way. Um, no, I'm not not necessarily happy with that. I'll have to alert them to that. Let's go back to my. Uh, let's go back to the library and find and do some research. So, um, articles. Um, I, I'm just going to do what's comfortable to me. Academic search premier. I'm going to go there. So it's called EBSCOhost. Uh, so now it's asking me to log into the proxies. Very good. That's what we want. And so I'm going to put in FERPA here. Sorry for taking the roundabout way. And I have 129 articles that I'm looking at. So um, definitely I want to narrow it down to peer-reviewed so that gets me down to 25 um, of all academic journals okay and the other thing I'm looking for is FERPA in the classroom and so we're just going to narrow it down and that gets me one probably not what I was looking for but that's okay so <clears throat> this particular article, say I'm looking at this article, um, one of the things that you're going to note up in the, the status bar if you've added that plugin and I'm using Google Chrome is I have a folder here. So if I select that folder um, it pops up with a box and not sure if you can see that box too. No? Okay. Uh, But it pops up with a box that you can select all the articles um, that you want to use. Okay, so uh, 
All right. Let's get back to where we were. Lost you for a second. We're back. We are back. Okay, so that's one way to do it. So you can click on this folder, and if you say if you have like you know four or five or ten articles, it'll bring up a list, and you just check off the boxes that you want, and you know hit submit, and it automatically pushes it into uh, Zotero. Um, in this case, I just want one article, so I'm going to go ahead and select that article and take a look at it. And if you see uh, in the address bar, there is a, an icon that when I mouse over it says save to Zotero. So this is just an article that I can use and I can save this article and it will capture all this information. So. Gareth is the author. Uh, privacy rights in the classroom. And so I'm going to go ahead and save that to Zotero. So a message comes up, saving to my library. Uh, it's getting privacy rat, uh, rights. And it's pulling that information into Zotero. Um, and basically, that's it. Uh, you can do this with other things. For example, if you go to Amazon, and uh, another book that I happen to be using in the classroom is called Game Changers. So I'm going to go look for Game Changers. Uh, and it's in books. And I'm looking... Uh, let's see... And put in the author's name also. Ah, there it is. Okay, so I can go ahead and select that particular book. And if you notice, the little icon up in the address bar um, now has the shape of a book. And I can go ahead and add that to my library. So it's adding that and also including a link back to Amazon. So let's uh, let's change. Let's go back to Zotero because we have two new articles in there, and we'll show them off. So automatically, here's that first book by uh, Oblinger, and it's called Game Changers, and it has an Amazon link that will take me back to that particular book. Um, once again, as I mentioned, I would like to get this set up so it's more properly for um, uh, APA format and Educause is in there and it pulled in a variety of information that's that's useful to me. The other one was Gareth. Uh, how do we spell his name? Or did we have an error? Well, if uh, I can't initially find it, what I'm going to do is do a sort, and I can I click on the, those articles at the very top. And so there it is, uh, Perry, Perry Gareth, Gareth Perry. Oh, I got the name wrong. Okay, so privacy rights in the classroom, that's going to deal with FERPA. And so what I can do is drag that into my FERPA um, collection. And so then I have it available to me, and I can uh, read that article, get my notes, uh, put any tags that I want dealing with FERPA, and have that available to me. So those you can do all kinds of searches. Right? Say that you're writing an article and uh, you're looking for a specific, you know, you just want to uh, use articles that are uh, more recent. So you can. Go from 200 or 2014, maybe through 2012, and just get the most recent research on that particular information. So that is uh, ways that you can do this. 
this is uh, an item I'm moving to trash, and so is this one. Okay. So as you can see, we have uh, different articles or things from the web. Uh, these happen to be web pages. We have a newspaper article, um, a journal article, different documents, books, I, all kinds of different resources um, that are available. Okay. And so now, what do you do with this stuff? Okay, this. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. So now, um, now that we have this information in there, you know, you go ahead and add your notes and your tags. Now it's a matter of of doing something useful for it with it. Um, so, for example, I have uh, this collection of books, and I, I want to show you two things. One, say that all these resources are going to be used in. Um, in my doc in my document okay and so what I want to do um, they're in no sense of order they're uh, except date order uh, and that doesn't really ma matter so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the first one and then hold the shift key down because I want to use all those resources um, I could also do it by holding the control key and selecting which ones I wanted to use. Um, but in this case, we're going to use all of them. And note that the author is in no uh, alphabetical order. I am going to then right click on that blue box or the blue material that I created, and I'm going to create a bibliography from items. And I'm going to select what style citation I want. And there's all kinds of different uh, styles that you can use. But um, we're going to be using APA 6. I want it. The output is to be bibliography. And I'm going to copy it to my clipboard. I can save it as uh, an RTF file, which is a file that you can use in Microsoft Word or uh, or print it out if you wanted to. So uh, different ways that you can do this, but copying it to the clipboard means I'm going to paste it somewhere else. And select OK. So now we're going to switch over to a Word document, and I'll share that out to you. And in this, I'm going to just type references. Right? So if I had a set of references here, and then I am going to paste. So I'm going to select paste and um, it basically spits it all out nice and neat for me. Also in alphabetical order all the, all the resources that I have um, that I selected for this. So really handy tool. I used, it, I used it throughout my whole dissertation as I was writing it. I would go out add new content, uh, I find that I didn't have the reference added yet, so I would go copy that one reference and add it in here. And um, it, it, it's quite nice in how it prepares this. So um, that's one way to do it. <clears throat> Once again, you know, all these references, um, I would use, uh, I created styles in my you know, for my dissertation for references, but in this case, we would just have to kind of move them over a little bit. And then we we uh, would title this, okay, so H1 for references. Um, so that's, that's one um, really useful report. And so let me uh, minimize that and go back to Zotero. Another thing that you can do in doing basically the same thing, I'm going to, you know, these have a couple notes in them that I've included. And so I'm going to go ahead and select those particular articles, right, because they do have notes uh, attached to them. And one of the requirements is creating an annotated bibliography. And, and I know there's, there's really, you know, there's certain ways that people want annotated bibliography. 
for me, I am concerned that uh, you know you find good references and you put notes in there, and uh, you can demonstrate that you do that. Um, so that that's what we're going to kind of reference as an annotated bibliography, at least for the class. And so one of the things that I can do is gener generate a report from items. So I'll go ahead and do that. And let me show you that, that particular report. And so this is what that report looks like. So it'll take all those items and it will bring out the, the critical information that you have. So you're not going to get a citation. You can always add that later if you want. And it'll include whatever notes. So includes indexes. Um, in this one, making distance education work. This happens to have uh, a few more notes on what we're doing, you know, what I included. Um, teaching and learning at a distance. And, you know, so as you can see, you know, it will send out all your information, also tell you what tags you have, uh, and include the notes. Okay, so um, for the class that I'm teaching, this is a report that I'm looking for. Um, that just demonstrates that, you know, you've got references in there, you're putting together solid notes, and uh, what have you. Okay, and basically what you can do is you can select all of this, Control A, hit copy, right, so you're going to copy it all, and then just go into a Word document and paste it. So I'm going to close that. Go back to our Word document. A lot of jumping around, I know. Um, there's my Microsoft Word. And so maybe in front of this, I'm going to go ahead and just paste that information. And so it put that information, you know, basically gave me a report. Um, there's ways that you can go ahead and clean this up, um, you know, to make it nicer. But um, basically, it provides uh, uh, the formatting that I need, and so, or it provides the information I need. So we can talk, you know, certainly later about cleaning it up. You know, you always want to try to put together a good product. So um, personally, I would clean this up a lot more. So. Um, let me go back to the end of this and just text only. So um, that is a way to you know export that particular information. So um, let me show you how to you know if you happen to be writing an article, um, there is a plugin for Microsoft Word that you can use. And let me share that out to you and show you how to use that particular plugin. All right, so say that we're starting in a document. So the first thing uh, that you want to know is that the plugin is available. So let me just rearrange things a little bit. So you have that plugin available, and you know that it's available because you have the add-ins. And so you have these references that you can, these tools that you can use. So go grab some, some information. And this is just, uh, it has no meaning, but uh, just to let you know. So I'm going gonna, gonna to just paste in this information a couple times. So that I'm in here. But I, I decide that this is going to be referenced to uh, Levine. And so 
so what I want to do is I want to include my citation in here and I'm going to I'm going to use APA 6 and I want the fields and so I'm looking for Levine and I just start typing in Levine and here is the reference that I'm using so Levine um, 2005 and I go ahead and add that where I had that uh, cursor it adds that automatically if I was at the end here I can add for example Knowles and I'm going to use Knowles uh, 2005 and maybe I want to use Downs also um, his network for connections and as you can see that it automatically put him in the right alphabetical order and perhaps I'm using also Tough uh, from 82 and I'm going to include that citation so when I hit enter it automatically enters that information and adds it uh, kind of nicely um, I can also you know once again I'm going to use this here maybe I have multiple authors so I have Schwartz right so that was that that guide that we had for Schwartz uh, let's see if uh, should have included Landrum, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to make sure that they're listed as authors. Let me go find one that has multiple authors. Uh, more, so more certainly does. So we'll add more. Uh, more and and uh, Kearsley. So it'll automatic put the ampersand in there nice and neatly for you. Um, maybe uh, who else? Let me go. There was another one. These guys. So Johansson, Howland, Moore, and Mara. All right. So it pulled those individuals in. So it, it does a nice job. Now, when you're done with that naturally you have your references at the end and what I can do is then build a reference list so there's another tool here that will insert the bibliography and all I have to do is click on that and it will go through and pull out from the article all those particular references and put them in alphabetic order automatically pretty powerful tool um, great way of of pulling that information together let me go ahead and close this and back to me um, I also want to show you in Zotero uh, just a just a fun little feature that allows you to um, see article so I'm going to go back to the library and under this uh, configuration tool one of the tools that you have is create a timeline and so this will show you basically all the articles that you have and as you you know kind of mouse over it will show you the dates um, when they were published um, back to the beginning of time Okay, so I'm thinking right here. Informal adult education. I thought I had more. Oh yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Well, that's in the 70s, so. Okay. So, one of the things you can do. Uh, let me go where there's more. Um, more articles and if you for example put in uh, informal learning it will show you all the different articles um, it'll highlight them in red dealing with informal learning you can also put in barriers 
or, or barrier and I'm doing that in blue and so there is an article whoop, go back here so all right so there's a couple articles that are are um, you know dealing with barriers but also with informal learning and and how those relate to each other and and this may be useful if you're building something that uh, is chronological and you have to control for that so um, quite a useful uh, tool <clears throat> so let's uh, I think I'm done with Zotero but let me show you a couple other uh, tools that have been extremely useful to me and I'm gonna go ahead and close Zotero right now and we're just um, gonna go oh and you guys didn't see that geez um, yeah le sorry let me let me show you that once again um, so I'm gonna pull up that timeline and and actually show you the timeline Sorry about that. So I have a timeline. So in the red, I put in informal learning. Right? So it'll show those particular articles. Um, barrier um, is an, uh, another one uh, that we can put in there. Um, or maybe adult. Right, so that that seems to generate a little more traffic. Right, so articles that have informal learning or or adult, um, and they're you know basically sit on a timeline. So you know you can see when you did you know certain research, certain uh, collections. You may want to put it together in a uh, you know chronological order. So so now I'm going to get rid of that. And we're going to go back to a web browser. And so one of the tools that I have is called Feedly, feedly.com. And what Feedly does for me is it allows me to track RSS feeds. So I have RSS feeds on all kinds of stuff. Um, and one of the topics that I have is informal learning. Um, that happened to be what my dissertation dealt with and so there's articles that are coming in and if you see you can also see that um, it's coming in from journal articles so here's a new article dealing with informal learning um, from a, a particular journal uh, let's see what else see if I have any other journal articles in here Google News. So a variety, just just a variety of different feeds. Um, yeah, show you. I'm also interested in uh, gamification. And oh, let's get there. And so this is coming in from a journal article, and this is coming from another journal article. So so two that get, got flagged uh, from gamification. So if I was to go to the library and conduct a search, and I'm going to do um, articles, and let's go back to that FERPA search. So I'm going to do FERPA once again. And it gives me 129 articles. So this is something that you know I may want to to keep track of. One of the the capabilities, let me see where it is.
they just changed it. So, well, so search history. So I go looking at this, and one of the capabilities I have is this this orange box, which basically indicates that that happens to be um, an RSS feed. And here is the link to that. So I'm going to capture that link and copy it. So copy. And then what I can do is I can go back and add content. And I'm going to pop that um, that link in. And it's not showing me any feeds right now. So save alert. Let's try it again. Hmm. All right, something I have to talk to the library. But basically what it would do is create a search similar to this. And that way, if any new articles came in, it would show what, you know, it would automatically uh, be available to you. You would be able to see it. Um, uh, this is this has uh, been very useful, once again, getting my dissertation ready. So I kept up on the latest research. And when I found an article, I would go ahead and put that directly into Zotero. Because linking to one of these, for example, Right? Oh, probably because I didn't wasn't logged in. Maybe that had something to do with it. So we'll go back to that, test that. Uh, but this will take me back to that article, and then I can save that. So let's go try this feed again. No? Okay. So I'll have to find out why that's not... Uh, coming through. So it, it happened before. I, they fixed it. Um, I'll test it again, you know, ask them again. So, um, But anyways, that'll take you right to this article. You can then save it directly, um, you know, to Zotero. So uh, quite, a, quite a useful resource um, when, when it's working right. So the other um, tool that's quite useful is called Google Scholar or scholar.google.com. And here is where you can go, um, you know, do some research. But one of the things that you want to do, first of all, is add your library. So if you haven't done this, you know, you'll have to be signed in with your account. So in this case, that I'm signed in with Stan Scrabbit. And I go to my library. And Let's cancel that. More. Or settings. Go to settings and library links. There it is. Settings and library links. So as you can see, I have the University of Wyoming library uh, put in there. And it's checked off. And that means that anything, when we start doing a search in uh, Google Scholar, the, the results will indicate whether or not it's available at the University of Wyoming. And that was shown, um, put together a, a previous video on how to use the library. Um, so th so that's, uh, that's quite useful. Um, other resources in there, my citations, so if you have any journal articles. Um, so I co-wrote with Dr. Shepard and it's been cited six times, so that's kind of a thrill for me, um, you know, seeing that that, that that information is there, and hope, hopefully we can, I can get more journal articles written in the near future. Um, my updates, uh, I don't have anything saved in there um, that would show 
although it is picking up stuff on uh, informal learning. So as you look at this, you know, this learner self-regulation, management, personal learning environments, I can go to the full text at the University of Wyoming Library and, you know, there is, uh, it says it's not available, but, you know, we can go chase that down if we wanted to. And also, adding to Zotero, this DOI, if you copy this um, particular item and dropped it into that magic wand, it would add that information for that article. So that's, that's another one, those DOIs um, that are useful. Informal learning recognition. So here is an article that we can that we can go look at. Um, actually, it's an article I'm interested in, so I'm going to just save that, and I'll go deal with it later. Um, and so these will point you to where these particular articles happen to be. Um, quite a useful tool. And um, another way of, of you know, kind of tapping into your research. So, you know, just make sure that you take care of those couple items. You know, get your library attached to it. Uh, you can set up alerts if you're looking for, you know, specific things that you can create an alert. Um, so Google Scholar has, has quite a bit of power to it. But, you know, as Cheryl Goldstein, uh, the associate librarian, for the University of Wyoming mentioned that a lot of things that pop up to the top in Google Scholar are based on the number of citations. Um, so the more citations means the more that that will pop up to the top, not necessarily that it's um, relevant to what you're doing. So, all right, let me um, let me stop that. Go back to uh, Google Hangout. Let's finish up for the day. So hopefully these, uh, these references, these tools will help you uh, do better research, um, be able to organize your research, be able to write better. Um, I, that, that's my intent um, when putting this together. So I uh, hope you found it useful. And uh, thanks for watching.